Hi, I'm CJ Buck, CEO of Buck Knives, and today I want to tell you a little bit of history about the 184 Buckmaster with my good friend Rich Nyman standing here next to me. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background on really why we did this knife in the first place. So the 184 Buckmaster was a special project. So I was 23 years old, I was managing our custom shop, and another side element of my responsibilities was doing special collectible projects. So we had one of our dealers, who was a part of a development, an R&D company, approach us to say they wanted to do a knife for the SEAL teams down in San Diego. It would be a 2,500 unit special knife for the SEAL teams. And because those numbers were smaller than a normal production run for us, that came under my purview as a special project. So we started working on uh, this knife. So this is the, the, uh, the 184 Buckmaster. What was interesting was that my father did not want to do this project. He felt like this was a fighting knife and my father was very concerned that buck knives would ever do something that would be overly weapon-esque and, and be damaging brand-wise to us. So it actually took a lot of conversation to come to the conclusion that this was really more of a survival knife. It really, it really wasn't, it's a terrible fighting knife. Yeah. Uh, the saw teeth, I mean, there's the, the weight of it, it's, just, it's a terrible fighting knife. It's much more uh, user-friendly in a survival tool uh, aspect. So they approached us in 1983, and we introduced this knife in 1984. And I remember um, we had a lot of learning to do because this was the first, the first hollow handle knife that we'd ever done. So how do we make this waterproof? How do we make the, the handle attached to the, to the blade properly? Uh, how do we make this work, handle the abuse it needs to handle? and still function. So it was a, it was an enormous heat treat uh, learning experience for us that, that you know, kind of like some of these NASA lunar missions, they, they, you know, once you really try and stretch the envelope, the things you learn, you can apply to uh, a lot of standard products. So the heat treat lessons, the spot tangineels, the, the different things we did for the blade uh, really came to play in, in the rest of our products. So we introduced this knife in 1984, SHOT Show 1984. We tried to get a, a, a forecast from our sales crew and they gave us a forecast of about hmm, 3,000 pieces or so. And that year, what did we sell? 56,000? Yeah, the, very, the very next year, it was actually 57,000 57, units. 57,000 units. Yeah. No internet, you know. Because the, the 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 Sly Stallone movie First Blood came out. What 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 he what Sylvester used in the movie was a custom knife made by Jimmy Lyle, but you couldn't get custom knives in any type of volume. So everybody wanting the First Blood knife ended up buying the uh, the Buckmaster. So it was from a from a project standpoint, considering how hard I had to browbeat everybody into moving ahead with this project. Uh, it really turned out uh, really well. And that was uh, that was 40 years ago. Yeah, it's crazy because I, I was one of those young kids back in the day in 1985 that bought one of these and uh, First Blood 2 came out and the it was so cool. We, we all wanted the Rambo knife, but obviously it wasn't the Rambo knife, but it was a buck knife. I want to point this knife out. So this is a uh, the pre-production prototype that was actually on a few, quite a few missions with Commander D.T. Coulter. Um, he was a lieutenant at the time, but this failed like that is. Yeah, all yeah. titanium. Yeah, all titanium. It's yep, the non magnetic. Yep, non magnetic. Even the bolt holding it together was titanium. Paul mm -hmm. Boss did the special heat treat on that, and um, the late Bob McDonald actually built this with uh, Doug Olson, did the pins on this one. But it's just a cool knife I wanted to point out. And if you notice, when you hold on to it, they kind of cross. Well, when we when Buck went to the production version, they got away from that. So yeah, you couldn't would, do it. Yeah, you would hold on to it, and it would actually hit your hand. 
And uh, then later, they introduced this one in 1985. Yeah, so this is the skeleton version. So it was uh, opportunity to do the basically the same blade, but with much less in the handle. So we were able to get a better uh, a better price point for people that just wanted uh, a blade. And then this was a little more conducive to diving because less pieces to to uh, to corrode. So rev us forward 40 years. We're going to rev forward. OK, so this is the new Buckmaster um, 084 uh, 2.0 combat diver uh, with direct input by Commander Coulter and a whole bunch of uh, uh, active and retired seals. They gave us input from the very beginning of the stages of this. So this is the very first Buck made prototype. The heat treat was by Paul Boss and he mm -hmm. did a wonderful heat treat on this one. And Paul wrote the recipe. Yeah, came out of retirement to write the recipe yeah, for, it, it's for a, this one. First time in Buck history that you'll see Boss, um, and it says Boss with the flame logo, um, 428C. Uh, the reason we picked the 420, you can explain that better. Yeah, best corrosion resistance that uh, we have. So from a from a diving knife standpoint, decent edge retention, decent ductility, but fantastic corrosion resistance. Something very special is from the original, we had the anchor. And in this one, we also have an anchor. But instead of the anchor hitting your hand one way, the buck engineers came up with a genius idea of having a little pressure uh, spring there. And there's a little detent to make it nice and tight if you so choose, but it literally goes in like that. And then you can literally hold on to like coral. For example, if there's no coral, you can flip it around and then right into the sand. It's really, it just feels so good mm -hmm. in your hand, you know. It's a much more user friendly than, than having to screw and unscrew the little pins and you end up losing the pins integrated into the sheath. I mean, there was a lot of work on the knife, but we also got a lot of feedback on the sheath as well. So yeah, the Buck engineers went over the top uh, for this. What was so cool is that um, they had a multi range of retention. So you have to have at least two points of retention on everything that, that's loose to be jump, uh, jump out of uh, airplane capable, okay? So what the engineers did is they have it nice and tight and then there's web gear. So it's one retention here, second retention on the web gear. And also for the emergency anchor wing, you can actually put it right in this way. Yeah, built right onto the sheet. Right, and then it's, it's designed also to be completely reversible. So if you're right hand, left hand, it doesn't matter, you can uh, do that. My son came up with a really good idea of, hey, why can't we put the anchor in um, uh, while it's in the sheath for protection for emergency mm -hmm. grapple? I'm like, oh my goodness, that's great. So the handles, they were tested by uh, one of the armors for SEAL Team 6. And what he did is he did a, a big variety of, of, of different hand sizes to fit this handle. Um, yeah, from the, from the texture, the outer shape, you know, hot spots, got to be usable with gloves, yeah. neoprene gloves. They are not used to telling somebody, hey, we suggest this, this, and this, and having a company actually do it, okay? And your company stood yeah. up, and your whole team, they listened. To That's funny, because it wouldn't even occur to yeah. us to not do that. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. and um, these, are, to, these are the experts. They're telling you what they need. Yeah. You're just trying to build the best product you can. Another advantage, the old one, the old anchoring system, it would hold uh, 250 pounds. This new one is 400. The tip is extremely strong. I, I, it's just every weakness of the original, this is taken away. So uh, it does not have the saw teeth. And, and it's, it's a big thing because a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't look like the original Buckmaster. Well, it doesn't because this is a true mission capable yeah weapon that was designed specifically for diving. Um, you really don't saw wood under the water. Now, yes, there's application for it, you know, but but that was the big thing is to be exactly what uh, the commander wanted. So what we're doing this year is we're doing a limited edition of a thousand pieces. One thousand. One thousand yeah. pieces uh, just to just to kick it off. Kind of neat to revisit history. 
and uh, now a 40 year time 40 capsule. years later 40 years later yeah. so dropping soon from buck knives is the buckmaster 2.0 combat diver they are going through the shop right now